What I'm going to show you is how the element zinc and the element sulfur react with a little bit of heat in the form of flame. The element zinc is a metal, it's shiny, gray, ductile, conduct electricity and heat. And I'm going to use zinc in its powdered form. The element sulfur is a non-metal, so it's non-malleable, it doesn't conduct electricity or heat. And non-metals are typically not gray, in this case sulfur is yellow. And to prove that it's not malleable, it actually is the opposite of malleable, which is brittle. If you hit it, it'll break into pieces. Whereas a metal, if it's hit with a hammer, it'll stay in its shape. Or you can bend it into a different shape, which is what the definition of malleable means. So I'm going to take these elements and put them to the side. I have it already pre-mixed on this little pile right here. And I'm going to react it with a heat source. And you can see what happens when it turns into an ionic compound zinc sulfur. Here's that product zinc sulfide, which is the ionic compound made from sulfur and zinc, a nonmetal and a metal. To understand why ionic compounds form and give off that energy, we're going to need to go through three periodic trends. These will go on the back side of your periodic table. Atomic radius will cover what, how, and why that affects um, electrons being exchanged. Ionization energy, what, how, and why that affects an atom gaining or losing an electron. And same with electron affinity, which is the third periodic trend that will help explain ionic bonding. There is a fourth periodic trend, electronegativity, but we won't need that until we cover covalent bonding. The first periodic trend that we'll have to understand is atomic radius. There are large atoms in the lower left side of the periodic table, and there are small atoms in the upper right corner of the periodic table. Why does that matter? It affects how strongly those electrons are held in the electron cloud and that will affect its ionization energy and the electron affinity of the atom. The second periodic trend is ionization energy. These are the ionization energies listed for period two elements, and you'll notice that lithium beryllium, which are metals, have a large radii and a low ionization energy because the electrons are farther away from the center of the atom and more loosely held, which means they're easier to remove. Non-metals have a higher ionization energy so they have a, a higher hold on those electrons due to them being closer to the center, which is positive, and it makes them harder to remove. The last periodic trend that helps us understand ionic bonding is electron affinity. Electron affinity is an exothermic energy, so in the upper right corner of the periodic table, those nonmetals will release more energy when they gain an electron, which means they're more likely to give back energy to the reaction. They have a small radii, so they have a high hold on their electrons, and they can also pull on electrons um, from other atoms, and they will exothermically give that energy back. There's one more thing that we have to go through, which is lattice energy. Lattice energy is the energy released when all of the cations and anions line up and build a crystal lattice structure. It's a very exothermic energy, and what it allows is the ionic bond to form. So that leads us to another foldable that we're going to make. It's just a simple hot dog fold with metal on the top and non-metal on the bottom. And what you'll go through is describing what the metal and the non-metal have to do to form an ionic bond.